morning. Welcome to sunny Winnipeg. Okay, well, step 49. And being as it's step 49, 50, and 51, don't involve the main ship as much as I like to have it here in front of me and look at it. And I thought it's going to be a lot safer to get it out of the way, so it's, it's back over there. <laughs> All right. Yeah, 49. We got some, a whole bunch of little parts we got to get here because we got to make 10 of these little guns. I, th I think the... Uh, I think these would be like the five inch guns, but I could be wrong. Uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll look it up and I'll dub underneath what they really are. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, yeah, the end sprue. There are 10 of them. Yeah, there's 10 of them. And uh, so we need a lot of little parts here. And as near as I can see, all of the stuff, all of the plastic, comes off of the end sprue for step 49. Uh, okay, uh, let, let's just maybe sort of get at it. Um, oh, I've got, I've got my heat gun here. There were at least two people were concerned when I was using the heat gun to, to force dry the uh, connection on the flagstaff in, in yesterday's episode. I just wanted to let you know this this thing is is quite a, a programmable or adjustable. It starts out at no, I'm going to give it to you in Fahrenheit, not Celsius, because that's that's the way it reads out. I think you can set set it to Celsius, but uh, anyway, it starts out at 120 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty low. I mean, uh, hey, that's. Uh, <laughs> Some some days here in Winnipeg it almost gets to 120 degrees, not not really. I don't think we very seldom get over 100 Fahrenheit. That is, in the summertime. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know what the record is for Winnipeg. I, I remember when I lived uh, when I lived as a kid in Omaha, Nebraska. It used to get well over 100 degrees some days, and the humidity. It, it, the humidity seemed like it was about 101%. For this poor little Canadian boy who was a little bit on the pudgy side, it was a real shock, I'll tell you. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> that's another story. Okay, yeah, I just thought I'd mention that. Uh, when I used the heat gun, uh, now mind you, there was that time that I got, I kept going hotter and hotter and hotter, and I think I melted the crane on the... I think it was on the Rodney. I, I almost ruined that. Yeah, that that was that was really stupid. Uh, I every time I look at the Rodney, if I look at the crane, I see that, and I think, ah. Oh. Anyway, uh, <laughs> some somebody had offered to send me a. Uh, uh, they they had the uh, Pontos kit that had the crane for the Rodney or something like that, and I just didn't want to get into that. I was, I was watching. Remember we were talking about. Uh, Steve in the model shed. Well, I, I, I did watch more of his video later, <clears throat> and he was uh, using the Ponto steel healing kit to, to, to make a bunch of little 20 millimeter guns and what have you. And uh, I, I just can't cope with all that, all that tiny little repetitive manipulating uh, with little tweezers and so on. Uh, I, I can do it. I could do it. Not as good as he does, of course. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, that kind of reminds me. I got a, a comment from somebody who was wondering, so how did he put it? And he didn't understand why I mention other viewers. Um, well, I don't know. I, uh, I, I think that, uh, pretty much everybody else, uh, in the modeling, uh, world is a better actual modeler than I am. And so, uh, yeah, I just happened to be thinking about it at the time while I'm flapping my lips and I, I blurred out their name. And then, of course, being as I've done that, I have to put in the bottom of the screen the, 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 the little uh, thumbnail for the, for the channel so people will watch short it. short ones which go on the side. I'll show you in a moment. There are some markings on the base to show where these braces fit. And, you know... I, I don't I don't care if you watch uh, somebody else like Steve in the model shed. I mean he is darn good, 
And, and if it means that you've only got, you know, you've only got half an hour of your time that you're going to spend watching uh, a model show, and you can't watch both, well, I recommend you watch his. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you'll learn, you'll learn a lot more. You'll learn a lot more. Uh, okay. Being all that as it may. Uh, let's uh, get ourselves going here and try and get some little parts off the end sprue. I'll, I'll make I'll make one of these on camera, and then the uh, the other nine, I, in, unless I have an unusual problem or something, I will do them off camera later. Uh, which means that the next episode will probably be really short. Now, what I was going to mention something. Oh, the sunrise. Uh, the sunrise this morning, uh, I glanced at it here oh, about half an hour ago, I guess. <clears throat> and it actually looked pretty nice. So, uh, all being well, I'll attach it at the end of today's episode. For those of you who do not want to watch the sunrise. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. And, and Missy the dog is very, very proud of herself. She's just strutting around. She thinks she is the coyote killer. <laughs> I sure showed that coyote. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, enough with the shenanigans here. Let's uh, recompose and uh, nip off some parts. Okay, we've already got the turret shell, or whatever they call it. And uh, a lot of nice detail on there including a little hair. Oh, come on. Okay. Uh, should I reshoot this? Nah. You've all seen hair before. Okay, so a moment ago, uh, I was going through the, uh, the manual here for step 49, and I can see here where uh, every piece that is left on this sprue we need in other words, we, it makes it easy. We don't have to go hunting for stuff. We just systematically start <laughs> and, and, and just cut everything off. Uh, yeah, and that means that at the end of today, we're going to have 10 more sprues to hang on the wall. Yeah, okay, let's uh, go ahead and get these and see if we can put one of these things together. Okay, my plan here is to get all the pieces for just one complete unit. Then I'll get the stuff off the other nine sprues later. All right, what is sprue? Okay, I guess I, I got a feeling that this is going to be on the inside of the turret, and we're not going to see it anyway. So, and obviously, I'm going to be trimming these up later. Okay, now we got some uh, smaller pieces. Both of these are an 11. You know, sometimes I wonder if I bring myself in sometimes just a little bit too close here. Okay. Nip. 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 And a nip. Okay, what do we got going on here? What's this? Oh, that's a push out pin mark, I guess. Yeah. I could be wrong, but, uh, you know, talking about other, other creators, I think Nigel Frampton once described what these push out pin things were. He knows a lot about that kind of stuff. Okay, moving right along. This is the axle or whatever that the that the gun barrels are going to pivot on. Now I, I remember, I forget which build it was, but I do recall one of the viewers telling me what the proper name for this this thing was. Is, is it a journal or I'm not sure. Okay. Now this I have no idea what it is. Maybe if we uh, check Stefan's drawing. I'll be able to figure it out. It goes, I think, on the back somewhere. Yeah. 
Okay, and we got a little tiny piece here. There's only one of them, so I don't think we need to worry about getting it mixed up because there's another thing exactly like it, so it's really tiny. I have to be careful I don't use too much glue. Get it with Tony's tweezers here. All right, now there are three of these. Two of them are 17s and one of them is a 16. Now, now this this right, stuff right here that I'm going to cut off, that, that's flashing. You know, we, we don't need that. But the other parts, uh, okay, yeah, you can you can see that this one is is mirror image to this one. These two are the same. So I think maybe just to play it safe, uh, what what do they look like on the other side? Just let me flip this over here. Okay, it looks like there's uh, some sort of a positioning pin or something's gonna gonna go in there. At least I'm thinking that's what it is. Now th there's a good chance I couldn't get it wrong anyway, but I I'm going to uh, keep these separate. So just give me a minute here, and I'm gonna get an extra tuna fish tin and label it. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep the 17s separate. Okay. We want this one, we want this one, and the 16 we'll just put in with all the rest of the pieces. Okay. Now, that means we have no more pieces on this sprue. We got all the pieces off. Okay, more wall decoration. Okay, I'm just looking at our N17 here. Now this part that I'm poking at right now is, is flashing. That's got to come off. And let me get this turned around here a little bit. Okay, th this piece that I'm touching right now I believe is flashing. That's got to come off. But you'll notice all the way around the outside there appears to be almost like a little flange or something and uh, is that flashing or is that supposed to stay on there it almost looks too thick to be flashing so I'm not going to take it off now, now this this little tiny tidbit right in there that that's that's clearly flashing now that's that's probably going to you know meld and become part of the sprue goo so uh, see it you know what, why don't we see if we can find, just for the fun of it, on one of Stefan's drawings, because there, there was several drawings of this turret. I only showed you the line drawing, but he also had some 3D type drawings that might show what this thing actually is. I sure do like to poke at stuff, don't I? Okay, here we are at the beginning of the five inch guns in Stefan Trembinski's book. And yeah, it's five inch. Uh, I wonder why they have the I in and the five. Uh, at first, I, I thought that it, was, it looked like sin. Anyway, maybe I should put on different glasses. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, so anyway, here's the beginning. Let's just uh, click ahead here. Uh, another side view, line drawing back view uh, now there's some kind of a gun sight right there all right here's that same gun sight okay here are those pieces okay you can see this one goes on this side and this one on this side all right here's a here's a better picture this shows the this will be our 17s they're both the same okay and uh, yeah there's that flange so that that obviously stays on and uh, let's go ahead here. Okay, here's that other drawing that I that I showed you earlier. Um, it it's right in front of that gun sight, almost as though it's. <laughs> would would there be some sort of a camera in behind there or something? I wonder. That that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I think we're just about at the end. Well, okay, here's another picture of that part that I showed. Um, but the gun sight is right in front of it, or some kind of sight. Uh, here's a line drawing from the side. 
uh, yeah it looks like there's some sort of a hydraulic cylinder here that would that would pull this open um, but why I guess if you uh, um, maybe uh, Carolina Jeff knows he's uh, familiar with this kind of stuff Oh, here's a real good shot of our 17s. <laughs> okay, we got a door that opens up here. This must be some kind of a... I bet you it's hiding some kind of an optical unit, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just guessing. Okay, I think that's... Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah, it looks like... Uh, I wonder what that's for. Yeah, would that be a camera? Or, I don't know. Okay, now we're at the end of the five inch guns. Well, that was interesting. Okay, I'm sure you all heard that. Cut the episode short and get out. <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching everybody. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.